Salutations. Today's briefing, INS Vishakapatnam and the future of India's destroyer force. The introduction of the INS Vishakapatnam leadership of her class continues India's development of world-class DDGs that began with a Kolkata class. Vessels of this class will likely be employed both as a central element of a carrier strike group and as the lead in a surface action group. The Indian Navy operates a force of 10 DDGs. For reference, the Royal Navy operates six DDGs, the French Navy between two and four, depending on how one classifies the two FREM air warfare vessels, the Italian Navy somewhere between two and eight, again, depending on how one classifies the FREMs, and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force with 19 modern DDGs. What next for the Navy's DDG force? Will it be evolution or revolution? Project 15B Vishakapatnam class, a successor to and evolution of the Type 15A Kolkata class destroyers. The Vishakapatnam class will consist of four vessels, the first commissioned in 2021 and the final ship planned to be commissioned in 2024, armed with 16 Brahmos, 32 Barakate missiles, four Baronastra heavyweight torpedo tubes, two helicopters, 176mm gun and four closing weapon systems. Changes over the Kolkata class include improved stealth performance, repositioning of the sonar to the bow and a redesign of the bridge. Project 15A Kolkata class. First world class DDG built in India. The Kolkata class consists of three vessels commissioned between 2014 and 2016 armed with 16 Brahmos missiles, 32 Barakates, four Varanastra heavyweight torpedo tubes, two helicopters, a 76mm gun and four close-in weapon systems. So exactly the same as a Vishakapatnam class. Although much more capable than the preceding Delhi class, it does draw its lineage from them. Project 15 Delhi class. The Delhi class represented a major development and led the way for the future of India's DDG force. Not only are they larger and more capable than the preceding Rajput class, they are also built in India, representing a critical first step in India's DDG force self-sufficiency. The class consists of three vessels commissioned between 1997 and 2001, armed with eight Brahmos, 32 Barak 1s, five Varanusya heavyweight torpedo tubes, two helicopters, one 100mm gun and two close-in weapon systems. Note the figures given are for the upgraded Delhi class and not all share the same configuration. We'll now look at the key modern weapon systems on these vessels, starting with Brahmos. Brahmos is the primary surface launched attack missile of the Indian Navy for both ship and land targets and is a joint Indian Russian program. For comparison, it has very high speed, especially when compared to Western equivalents greater than Mach 3 vice subsonic for the Western equivalents. It is longer and has greater diameter than the Tomahawk cruise missile, but has a smaller warhead. Its warhead is of a similar size to that found on the Harpoon anti ship missiles, which is subsonic and much shorter range than Brahmos. India continues to develop the Brahmos, in particular extending its range. SAM systems. India's frontline ship based SAM system is the Barak 8, jointly developed with Israel and a development of the Barak 1. Currently with a range of up to 100 kilometers, longer range versions are under development. One of the strengths of India's modern DDGs, the Delhi, Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes, is the dual large hangar configuration, each able to accommodate a Sea King, a good sized and very capable anti-submarine warfare helicopter. Moving forward, it is likely India will replace the Sea Kings on the DDGs with the MH60 Romeos, further improving the vessel's anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The other key anti-submarine warfare weapon system found on these DDGs are the Varanastra heavyweight torpedo tubes. Unlike many Western navies, India has maintained heavyweight, that's 21 inch or 533 millimeter, torpedo tubes on its DDGs providing a far more potent threat than lightweight torpedoes. Finally, guns. 
The DDGs briefed here are armed with either a 76mm or 100mm gun. Although the Vishakhapatnam class were originally to have been armed with a 127mm or 5 inch gun, that was cancelled, suggesting India looks at the DDG's main gun as having a significant air defence role. Note, obviously sensors are a crucial part of a weapon system and the overall capability of a ship, but I won't be covering them in this briefing. So what might be the future direction of the Indian Navy's DDG force if it is to maintain a strength of 10 vessels? Presented are four possible options. Of course, there could be more. Note, while different classes, there is substantial commonality between the Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes. Also, we don't yet know what the Project 18 DDG will look like, but we should expect it to be significantly different to the Project 15B. Option one. Three new build modified Project 15Bs with a universal vertical launch system of at least 48 cells capable of launching the latest versions of Brahmos and Barak 8 in front of the bridge, together with the new close in weapon systems. These would replace the three Delhi class, with the Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes remaining as is. The pros in this option are platform commonality with savings used for growth in other areas of the Navy, for example, carriers and or SSNs. Cons, there are different levels of capability across the DDG force and probably no new DDG class for around 20 years. Assessment, lowest risk and cheapest option. Option two, three modified Project 15Bs and upgraded Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes with the same universal VLS and new weapon system, uh, closing weapon systems as the new vessels. Pros, all vessels are equally capable. There are no tiers or levels of capability. Common Italy across the fleet, essentially one class with savings reinvested across the fleet. Cons, again, probably no new DDG class for around 20 years. Assessment, low risk, but more expensive than option one. Option three, three Project 18s to replace the Delhi class with a Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes remaining as is. Pros, three far more capable vessels than the other seven DDGs. Cons, small class size of three for the new class, so limited economies of scale in production, and two different classes and two different tiers of DDGs in the Indian Navy force. Assessment, moderate risk and more expensive than option two. Option four, six Project 18s to replace the Delhi and Kolkata classes. The pros, it's a most capable mix over the entire DDG force. The cons, two very distinct classes. Assessment, moderate risk and most expensive option. How will India weigh up the potential resource allocation question of replacing DDGs vice a third aircraft carrier and or new SSNs? If India wants the strongest DDG force at the probable detriment of fleet balance, then option four is likely. If India wants a very capable DDG force and more balanced fleet, then option two may be the way forward. In summary, with the introduction of the Kolkata and Vishakhapatnam classes, the Indian Navy has world-class DDGs, in particular in anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare domains. A force of 10 modern DDGs is larger than those of any European Navy, and India does not appear to need equal numbers of DDGs as found in Japanese and Chinese totals. Doing so would reduce the quality of the DDGs and or reduce funds for other areas of the Navy. India's decision on its next DDG could well determine the balance of the Indian fleet for the next 20 years. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.